Daily Broadside Day 703. Last night I took in the new three-part series on uh, Scott and Lacey Peterson's tumultuous uh, ending of life together, uh, both between prison and the uh, bay uh, where she rested uh, until they found her torso. So here's the thing. I had forgotten most. I, I think I had forgotten how ridiculously popular this case was in the late 19, no, early 2000, 2002, I think it was. But I got to tell you, there's a few things that I took away from this. Uh, I think I knew about 85% of this case or remembered it or whatever. There are a couple little uh, things that, that they pointed out that I had forgotten or didn't know. But for the most part, Scott Peterson's got to be one of the dumbest people I've ever had. You got to be like smarter than the average bear to pull off an unaliving of an eight month old pregnant woman who's doted on by everybody around her and by all accounts seems to be a delightful human being that you apparently didn't want on the planet because you met up with some chick wherever you met her up man but I, I just he he does not have the mental capacity to do uh what needed to be done and i'm not encouraging that it be done but uh he's just not built that way and um man but it was just funny to watch that part like he and he still to this day maintains his innocence you know um he, he, 2004 or no yeah i think 2004 he's convicted dude's been in jail for 20 years still maintains it is he admits it was wrong for him to cheat on his wife but at the same time he didn't get he didn't unalive anybody so there's that but here's a couple things right number one the fertilizer industry in the 90s must have been absolutely bonkers insane mad money they were throwing around five hundred thousand dollar rewards for lacy and all this and i get you can't put a price on you know, uh, you know, your kids or whatever. And I don't know who was fronting all this money, but that's $874,000 in today's, uh, amount. And it's like, if one of my kids went missing, you know, I don't know how much I'd be willing to spend, but it ain't a half a million dollars. Uh, it's probably about four grand, you know, and I hope they come back safe because, uh, four grand is the amount that I've decided I can accidentally lose and not cry. Okay. That's just, the arbitrary and capricious amount that you know i'm at but anyway that's uh that fertilizer money must have been good man and you know how like you know how you see on the used markets you'll be like hey uh used boat only used once well somebody got a smoking deal on that fish master game fisher or game master whatever that boat was called because that thing was bought on the ninth it was used to destroy her on the 24th and then it was never used again that thing went in the bay one time and then somebody got a smoke i think we should do a documentary on where that boat is these days because you know that thing's still out in the water somewhere uh but yeah he's he was a dummy i tell you what thing they should have done with the documentary though if you've seen it is uh a family tree because there's so many dang step cousins and step brothers and sisters everybody's married two or three times and all these friends i'm like Whose side is this person on? Because the Peterson family, uh, for the most part, apparently still believes and maintains an innocence. In fact, one of the morons in that family, Janie, got a gun and went and got a law degree so that she could work on freeing him. You want to talk about, look, this is me in the Peterson family finding out at Thanksgiving dinner that my cousin Janie is going back to law school to free Scott. I pass the yams and that's the dumbest thing i've ever yeah that that would be my pretty much the, the what i would respond to with that um but yeah it's kind of a simple story really you know boy meets girl falls in love gets married he don't want kids they decide to have kids anyway he slips one past the goalie whatever happens then guy meets second girl decides the second girl's better than first girl so he offs second or first girl so that he can be with with first girl and that's really all there is to it. Uh, it's really just a circumstantial case of evidence. There's not a lot of stuff other than some hair wrapped around some pliers. There's not a lot going on there. But uh, I don't remember who it was um, in the, the first Indiana Jones movie. But um, you remember when Indy is like, oh, if I know so-and-so well enough, uh, he's probably blending in like a maniac right now. And then they cut to him and he's like, hello, does anybody speak English? Where Where is the, you know, that would be Scott if he'd have made it to Mexico with all that camping gear he got, you know, at camping world, he's trying to abscond down to Mexico. It, it just wouldn't have, he would have stuck out like a sore thumb. Cause ain't nobody got orange hair 
you know, and is six feet tall in Mexico. You know, I don't know how tall Scott is, but he looks six feet tall. Of course, I think Lacey was like three foot nine or something. She's a tiny little diminutive chick, but uh, was and then was a lot shorter when just her torso rolled up in the bay on the shore. You know what I mean? But yeah, he, he would have stood out. That would have been a dumb plan. He had 15 grand, like a knife and some credit cards. Where are you going to go? What kind of adobe are you buying down there? Are you going to blend in with your orange damn hair? You know what I mean? And uh, and white people, dear white people, y'all got to stop naming your dog stuff like McKenzie because the Petersons had a dang uh, golden retriever. First of all, don't get me started on golden retriever. I had a real good friend of mine, and uh, he had a golden retriever, and its name was Duchess. Duchess. Why the heck you going to name a dog Duchess? That's like naming a dog McKenzie. And I'm not cool with that either. But yeah, white people got some stupid names for dogs. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's an interesting uh, tale, I guess. Uh, it was worth, uh, you know, two hours and 52 minutes or whatever I spent last night watching it. But, uh, uh, but yeah, the last thing I'll say is Amber Fry, call me.